What is happening? Hey, how's it going, everybody? All right, today is the 21st of May. Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, it's uh, Monday afternoon. Now, 1 p.m. local time, uh, 21st, I think. Yeah, it's my ex-wife's birthday. So, I know my son Bradley's probably going to see this. Might as well tell him, wish his mom a happy birthday. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, I'm not really into holiday kind of stuff or celebrations like that. I didn't even, you guys saw how I was on my 50th birthday. I didn't even give a shit. But, uh, you know, it's still, it's a little nice gesture, I guess, sometimes. All right, anyway, we are on the, basically on the, the main corridor between uh, Columbus and Toledo. Uh, I took US-23 up from the north end of Columbus, and then just uh, not, you know, maybe about five miles back, maybe ten miles back or so, uh, 23 and State Route 15 split off, and now we're on the Highway 15 side. Uh, 15 will take us right into, um, let me get zoomed in. Now that you see the map view there, um, I know it starts with an F. The place we're going to is straight to the south from Toledo, as you see. Uh, Toledo being at the top of the map view and Columbus down at the bottom. We're going to get zoomed in for you guys. We're 17 miles out right now. Okay. Now this is one of these little tricky ones to figure out what, well, I mean, now looking at the map view from like here, it looked like it could be a little tricky figuring out what would be the most ideal truck route. Although, um, I can kind of see there's a east-west road north of the, the green one that's uh, east-west that's on the north end of town there, uh, Findlay. Findlay, Ohio, that's where we're going to. They're picking up a Campbell's soup load. I do expect that it'll be a live load. Uh, I've never been here before. I think this is why uh, I would say this is one of Hirschbox customers. Uh, I'm all being legacy Hearst box customers. Uh, but on the other hand, I think I have, a, you know, occasionally, once in a blue moon, heard of a JCT driver going there before the acquisition. Uh, but, you know, we're out. we don't do much in Ohio as it is. I, I could probably, I bet I could still count on one hand how many times I've done a pickup or delivery in Ohio with JCT in uh, six plus years before we officially became part of her spot. Alright, but yeah, right, right, right up there where that small writing says High Point. Pretty sure is, uh, I can see an east-west road up there that I believe is going to be what will get us to the customer most uh, ideally. Alright, um, yeah, as we get zoomed in more, we'll see, because we don't want to go through town. They see all those yellow and red spots on there, and then now you have the the city limit there as well. Uh, I mean, where the you know, the city boundary is all in white, and then the rest of the map is in green. So where you see all that white, I'm pretty sure are going to be plenty of traffic lights. So uh, I don't want to be up and going up in that direction if I don't need to. So and this is uh, limited access highway right here. We can stay that way up until we get to the north end of town. Don't lose control of your truck there, Western Express. Saw that little jerkiness there. It's not the same Western truck I passed earlier, is it? I don't remember. I know he was kicking back at like 61 earlier, but I don't know if that's the same guy. Um, I don't know, it might be. It was, I remember it was the younger black guy driving the other one, and that one was the younger black guy too, so. I thought the other one was loaded or something. Or no, it's not the same guy because the other one was a drive-in. This guy's a flatbed. Alright. Alright. Anyway. So what we're going to talk about today is about dispatchers. Um, more particularly, um, my experience with dispatchers down in the general... Uh, ideology about whether they should or shouldn't have prior CDL experience themselves and uh, some other some experiences I've had with dispatchers that sometimes make you wonder right, you know 
If you have an issue with a dispatcher, sometimes it's not the dispatcher. That's the problem. That's the driver. Actually, quite a bit. Um, anyway, um, now my first experience with a dispatcher, you know, like a, a permanent dispatcher, was in my Sea of England days. I had a dispatcher there named, by the name of Ken Brown. Uh, those are guys who are England drivers. I, I don't know if he's even still there. I. Those of you guys, I don't know, those of you guys have been around a long time. Charles uh, Braid, I think you, uh, I'm sure you know him. Um, all right, so he was my first DM over there. Actually, my only DM over there outside of the Walmart fleet. And I'll tell you what, that guy was worth his weight in gold. Now, he had prior CDL experience himself, a, a fair amount of it, too. And on top of that, you know, I... I had a really good trainer overall uh, at that, you know, on the, uh, when I ran OTR, uh, you know, when I first got my CDL. My trainer had just under 20 years of uh, OTR experience when um, he trained me, so, and not many, uh, not many newcomers to England or CDL at all uh, could say they had that kind of experience. And yeah, he, he, had, he had a lot of useful uh, knowledge and uh, tips and stuff. but. After I got off of Joe's truck, you guys have met him before on my channel. Uh, that's my trainer. Um, I ended up, you know, dealing with, uh, yeah, I've been in, uh, on Ken Brown's fleet. And I'll tell you what, that guy had some serious dedication. His normal work hours were 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., I think it was, if I remember correctly. And there, I could be up. I, mean, I could be driving at like four, or five, like because it's uh, mountain time. Because they're based in Salt Lake City, you better not slow down in front of me, car. You're already moving over too soon. You're barely 50 feet in front of me. That's too close. Um, yeah. Again, general rule of thumb: if you can't see both of my headlights through your interior mirror, don't move over. Um, anyway, yeah. So Ken. He was actually a really good mentor to me. You know, I, I could have seen him as just another dispatcher or whatever, like all the crap I've heard about dispatchers before, but Ken, again, was a former driver, and I knew he knew his stuff. So, you know, I was, well, a lot of times, yeah, there were times I argued with him about stuff because I'm trying to learn th uh, things myself. And actually, that's one of my best ways to learn is arguing with people and being proven wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I sound like a know-it-all, and then I argue with somebody, and but then that's where, you know, if you're just one of those, uh, yeah, you're just a know-it-all, you know, but you can't really explain anything to me, then you're kind of proving my point that um, I probably know more than you, even if you have experience. But if I kind of come across as a know-it-all, but then you actually you can actually sell me on your knowledge, like why your knowledge is, 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 is essential for me to pick up on, you know, why I should buy it or believe it, you got me hook, line, and sinker. Once I know that, then I'll listen to everything you have to say, even if I don't necessarily agree with you on everything, whether it's philosophically or in some other ways, I'm definitely going to be listening to you and, uh, you know, respecting uh, the fact you probably have some... Uh, definitely value to me as a, as a mentor so anyway but Ken yeah he was a, he was an excellent uh, mentor to me uh, I learned so much about trucking from him even as a yeah with him being a dispatcher and you know and I know there were times where you know, I could be driving at like four or five in the morning mountain time it could be anywhere but he, you know it would be four or five a.m. Um, Salt Lake City time and he would be up like sending messages making sure we're doing all right and you know, ch uh, whatever uh, trying to make sure our needs are being met whatever and I was like holy shit man this guy's got some dedication let me get zoomed in here yeah the East Bigelow Avenue that's the one I want to take I just saw that a second ago all right uh, from there though you know because you get a lot of drivers who will say that dispatchers should always have prior CDL experience I could see why they'd say that but at the same time I've had some dispatchers at JCT 
who had no prior CDL experience, who I had uh, very good experiences with. Um, one in particular, who I think is, yeah, should still be with us, uh, Amy Alvarez. I want to throw that, I'll throw her name out of the bus there. <laughs> okay, so Amy does not have prior CDL experience. Uh, at least I don't think she has. Uh, I, I've, I've never heard about her having it. But now, I've always had a, I mean, okay, when I first met her, she was a nighttime, night and weekend type dispatcher. And I was with that. Actually, the, the dispatcher I had prior to her, Shay, um, Shaylin Martinez. Yeah. Um, I had a really good rapport with Shay also. She was a very good, uh, she was an excellent PM. She had no prior CDL experience. And Amy, when, because uh, before Shay left, Amy became a daytime dispatcher. Four miles, keep right to take the exit and then turn right. Um, okay, shut up. All right, this, uh, I don't know what's four miles away, but County Road 99. I don't know what road that is, but I don't think I'm. And I like being, I know I love being trapped here. Okay, anyway, after Shay quit, I had another particular DM. I'm not going to name her name because, uh, I mean, she was really good at keeping me running, but chemistry wasn't there. Personality, uh, I, sh I don't think she liked me at all. Uh, maybe because her knowledge of me from our Facebook groups or something. I have no idea. But, um, and just, uh, just did not get good vibes from her. I, I was always moving though with her, I'll give it that, but uh, there were other reasons why you know, I ended up not, I, I had to get off her board. I was, you know, if I feel like you don't like me as a person, then you're not going to be you know, serving my better interest when I need favors or help with something. You know, so if I have that kind of rapport, you know, even if I, if I can't even get like some kind of a business rapport with you, and that's all I was trying to get with her was a business report. And I think this woman maybe thought I was hitting on her a couple times when I wasn't. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I just wasn't right. So I, I asked uh, the fleet manager if I'd get on a different, you know, get moved to a different DM, and I named her request and uh, Amy, because I knew Amy had moved over from night weekends to days, and I always had a good rapport with her when I interacted with her before, so I was like, you know, I gotta, I gotta get on her board. And it turned out, I was, yeah, I was good. She was great for me, uh, great to work with she, until she became a planner. And uh, you now and then I ended up, uh, you know, switching a couple more DMs. I, I just got a new one after my most recent one either got fired or laid off. I don't know whatever it was, but uh, yeah, so far the new one, her name's Tasman Weeds. Uh, she's been great. Communication's great. Uh, she's doing, she's been doing an excellent job of uh, keeping me moving with uh, good freight and stuff. There are a lot of drivers who I've been seeing complaining about not getting miles. Um, shit, I think I was, oh no. Okay, I see. Yeah, see, I was thinking I was going to use this section here, but the onboard wants me to use this next one up here, where the Speedway truck stop is, and I can see why it's uh, why it might be a good option there. Actually, look at it on the map because I stay more out of the white area, which is city area, which means traffic lights and stop signs more likely, or more of them. All right, so your mileage is going to vary. I mean, yeah, in general, you're going to have better dispatchers. If they have CDL experience, um, I mean, you go to this guy Trucks' YouTube channel. He was just lamenting not long ago about the uh, experience he had with Western Flyer Express before he left them, and how they would uh, micromanage everything he did. And it's like, it, 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 you, yeah, and he was saying like, you do realize that you have to have like whatever amount of experience to even get hired here, right? That means we should you, know, you come here already. Uh, knowing what we're doing or having an idea of what we're doing and uh, shouldn't need to be having our hand held like we're a bunch of trainees or something. Uh, 
This is one of the things that can drive a driver nuts is someone trying to micromanage how a driver does the work, with, especially when you don't even know what it's like to be a driver out here yourself. They don't know what kind of problems we deal with in terms of uh, not being able to find parking or you know, managing our, our clocks where you know, I get to about 100 miles away from a customer and shut down whatever. It's you still have a significant amount of your shift left to run after that. Uh, so you can easily you know, deadhead a couple hundred more miles to pick up another load. And uh, yeah, and then still have at least two or three hundred more miles yeah, perhaps that you could run after that with uh, once you're loaded and keep you moving toward your customer. And But dispatchers don't always know that, especially the ones who don't have prior CDL experience. Uh, what I just had when I picked up that Green Bay load to Oakland. Remember, I had that scale problem, and I was kind of, uh, kind of clowning the guy. Yeah, again, he's he's he evidently doesn't have CDL experience. He's probably he evidently is new to dealing with truckers. It seems. Um, yeah, I don't want to name his name, but uh, yeah, yeah, he could turn out to be a great uh, dispatcher later on. It's it's just one of those I don't think he has experience and has things to learn kind of situation and you know when I say that I, you know, I got eight years of experience here and I know when I need to get reworked and not when I when I don't need to rework and there are times I'll actually take stuff that really should get reworked but I don't now, I will sometimes cheat on stuff I will admit but more, uh, but on a load like that one, nope, uh-uh, no, uh, hell no. I'm not going to, uh, that load's getting reworked. I know there's no way I'm going to get that thing legal to stop getting it reworked first. And there's it's too uh, too much risk of uh, getting put out of service or ticketed it or whatever in California. And the guy's like, well, can't you slide the tandems forward? I, like I just told you, I have to slide the tandems back to, to make it legal. And I'm already at the California limit. I can't go any further back. So, yeah, this is where not having CDL experience can kind of sometimes bite you in terms of uh, a driver's confidence in you if you're a dispatcher. Now, on the other hand, um, let me zoom in here. All right, I see that little street there uh, right in front of the r &L Carriers Terminal. We're going to turn. Um, now... It goes the other way too, though, because I remember there was a dispatcher, a weekend dispatcher we used to have. He became, eventually became a planner, yeah, for us. Uh, his name's Rich Hates. Now I had a couple little run-ins with him early on, but I got to where he and I developed a very strong respect for each other, and we'd always uh, we'd hook each other up a lot, uh, do each other favors all the time because, you know. Uh, he's got an abrasive personality like me. He's not the easiest guy to get along with, and yeah, <laughs> I'm not either. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, he. Uh, I had an issue with the load. We're kind of short on time here. I'll just uh, kind of shorten it up here by saying this guy had. Uh, yeah, he was a weekend DM. I had an issue with the load. Uh, well, actually, a tire on my trailer needed to get worked. And I went in there to try to talk to him to let him know about uh, um, the load. Well, while I'm waiting, he's talking to a couple of, please walk to the guard shack and, okay. So, if you have an appointment, please walk to guard shack and let them know of your arrival. Okay, so, um, wait. No, that's the claim. All right, two right lanes for trucks. Now self-service, please pull forward and check in by scanning the yellow QR code with your phone. Please keep truck pulled up as far as possible. Okay. Alright, let me get uh, this QR code pulled up then. Uh, that's pretty convenient to have uh, a few of them here. Okay, so... Oh yeah, I got it on the fly. <laughs> okay. We'll get our arrival call sent here and then get checked in and uh, uh, see how things, how things go from here. Look like there's plenty of room to dock. 
Uh, oh, he's pulling forward, so. All right. We have my HOS, shithead. Slide tandem severe on concrete pad. Okay. Get checked in and uh, we'll get docked in as soon as we can. Alright, guys, we're done checking in. Um, just uh, be forewarned, you're going to need to scan your CDL and send a digital copy of it to them on that thing. Um, I know some of you guys don't want to do that, so if you have an issue with that, you might, want, might, might not want to pick up your load here. So I got a text, it'll give you text message instructions. Uh, it says uh, slide your tandems and then uh, pull up to the welcome gate. You'll be sent a text message with your dock door or yard designation after your trailer has been inspected. All right, OTR lanes, there are three of them, I guess, uh, doesn't matter which one we take. Assuming that's the same same QR code as the other one that I already did. Truck drivers enter here. Alright. Now's not the time, I'm busy. All right, guys, we got a dock door assignment. Uh, it's at door 116. Not sure we're good there. Got a pretty good crowd of guys uh, of other truckers coming in right now. Don't see too many female uh, landscapers. Interesting. Doesn't bother me at all, but I'm just, uh, you know, it's not something that... The average woman wants to do. <laughs> so I mean, she got my respect. She likes to work hard like that because it's not easy. At least. It's definitely not for someone my size. Okay. Um, I need to get my doors open still. Yeah. Basically, we're gonna drop our trailer in the door here, and then uh, up there, further down on the other end of the building, we're gonna bobtail down to there and wait. Okay, so this is a dry load. Um, I have my, my reefer pre cooling to zero because that's what the thing said on my load assignment. I suspected it was going to be a dry load, but I wasn't sure. Um, oh, it felt really nice when I opened that trailer door. So, in 85 degree weather, oh, you know, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, but yeah, he told me I could turn it off. There's, uh, I don't need it. And also, when you get your trailer inspected, I want to go ahead and close the trailer door. I'm going to open the trailer doors there. Uh, hopefully, I can time this. It's not easy to time when it's uh, when the tandems are back, but you can get good at it if you don't practice it. Okay, I'm a little bit off there. Not far off, but yeah, I need to go a little bit more to the right. Let's see if I can catch it. Yeah, I think I'm just perfect there. Yeah. Right where I want it. At least uh, as far as this pad here is with you. I don't know. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, that's 
get disconnected and we'll get uh, over there. Guys, we are disconnected here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull away from the kingpin. Drop my airbags. Right, we are good there. Okay. Once again, look up ahead here. Why do people have to do this? Why do you have to block the lane to open your damn trailer doors? Go do that shit somewhere else where people can drive by. Now nobody can go by because this asshole wants to just block the lane for as long as he wants to, to deal with his, with his doors. But where, do you, where do people learn these manners? Hope he didn't get hit. I don't know. Let me stay back here. Why don't you open them trailer doors while you're not blocking a damn lane? Open and is trying to dock in. Alright. What is it with everybody wanting to call me while I'm trying to vlog? <laughs> Now's not the time. I'm busy. Alright, alright. I see an outhouse here. Or as, uh, as my buddy John calls it, a porta potty or porta john or whatever else. Um. Yeah, those are more specific terms to the manufacturer. Outhouse is the general term that should be used for something of that you know, type where it's just a, a structure that houses a toilet. All right, anyway. Oh. All right, this should work. Okay, it is uh, 1.39 local time. This is a CH Robinson load. I'm going to have to double check that, they, uh, that they've been contacted because I know they're one of those, uh, uh, you know, some people call them cheap and heavy Robinson. They've been known for that. <laughs> I think it's funny just the name of that. Uh, I don't know that. And actually, someone I know had a load from, uh, that was a CH Robinson uh, book load and it was actually pretty light. Um, it might have even been picked up here. I don't remember. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll get lucky. I have no idea how much this load's supposed to weigh, but uh, if it's camel's soup or stuff, it's got to be. I'm assuming it's light. So, find out here. All right. Uh, hopefully, we'll be within the next couple hours, we'll be out of here. Alright guys, we're done loading already. It's uh, just before 3 p.m. So uh, pretty good, uh, pretty quick here. Uh, everything comes by text message. Uh, these guys stopped right in front of my trailer. I think they are. Alright, so yeah, I, and I even got a message uh, when it was uh, just past the 50% complete point. Uh, so it's pretty nice, a pretty neat system here. Um, what time did that? That came in at um, two twelve. Oh no, that's when it's begun. Two twenty-four. I was already uh, getting a text message about the halfway point. Um, yeah, I think I'm. Let's see. No, I'm I'm further down. Okay, and then uh, let me get over this way so the shag driver can do his thing. Ah, uh, yeah, there's my trailer right there. I just got to figure out. Oh, are you getting ready to back? All uh, right, what door are you going to? Oh, okay. All uh, right, yeah, I'm going to the Hirschbach right there, so appreciate it. 
Oh, yeah, he's two doors past, so... Yeah, I was going to wait for him, especially if he was going to be docking into 117, but... Since he's doing 118, he's got room to work with. Uh, I was uh, nice to him. That's why I want to at least communicate first, because, you know, he was there first. Uh, Alright. A little bit hard there. Oh well. Okay, I'm gonna get hooked up and well, uh, we gotta go out that direction, go around the building, and then there'll be a scale over there. We'll have to get on and check out with uh, the scale people over there, or guard shack, whatever you want to call them over there. guys so this gun drum driver here I was gonna slide towns and all that but I think this uh, this guy's trailers right there so there's a gun drum trailer right in front of me and that's a gun drum truck looking like he's waiting for me so he's probably trying to get to that trailer I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the door first get over here I need the ten I need more air to get to the trailer anyway so the thing I don't like about these Hirschbach trailers is the airbags auto deflate as soon as you set the brakes and uh, pisses out all the air from the trailer when it does it and man, it takes time to air back up that's one one of my wish list things I'd like to see different about their uh, their trailer specs oh. all right guys we are ready to dock out here I mean to, to check out um, Sent the tandems back to the California hole just because it's my kind of standard where I like to have it. Um, the most restrictive state I'll have to deal with is Illinois. Because this load is going to Illinois. We'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, this is going to Melrose Park, Illinois, in the Chicago area. Uh, I forget the name of the customer. Um, not such a big deal anyway. Uh, I'll be vlogging that one on the next video anyway. Uh, but it's, it's a little pissant load as I call it, um, not even 300 loaded miles if I recall. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it delivers tomorrow, so it's not like I'm going to have it very long. I'm, running, I'm getting into recaps anyway, even, uh, even though I've only, what, I still have uh, almost 10 hours of my, uh, oh shit, hang on, I didn't know this guy was even backing up. I didn't know he was backing up until I was already committing to going by him. Sorry, Bob. Tell I was gonna. I would have let you by. I was uh, too close before I realized you were coming back to that uh, other spot. I thought he was just gonna stay there in that dirt area or something. And plus, I couldn't see him around the the back of the corner of that. The other guy that was over there. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm getting into recaps. I have uh, 8:47 of clock left to work with you know, on my 11 today, and I only have 10:14 left to work with between today and tomorrow anyway. So, just how far am I really going to get? Not very far. Um, so. I'm not really too concerned. I can always, yeah, and I don't want, there's not much for parking in that area. I'm not going to show up in the Chicago area, and I'm not going to try to park in the Chicago area, especially I'm not going to try to find a parking spot there if I don't need to, especially the hour I'm going to end up getting there. So I'm just going to get it on to somewhere on to I-80 slash 90 somewhere. Um, I'm probably into Indiana somewhere. I don't know yet exactly where but I think it'll probably shut down in that neck of the woods somewhere and uh, and then I'll just run it into the customer uh, tomorrow morning when it's due there and uh, yeah I have another uh, pre-plan after that 
that'll get me moving back in the direction of California. It's not going to get me to California, but it's in that direction, and uh, you know, it's a good plan. I I know I have an experience with where it's going to. Uh, we'll talk some more about that one as well on the next video, okay? Uh, meanwhile, we'll go ahead and see how things go with this uh, check out here. Um, yeah, it's a dry load of like you know, all the usual stuff. They're uh, soup cans and whatever else. Two truck scales on the left and then shuttle on the right. Okay. These guys both have good weights. Good grief. I mean, I, we all love our dogs, but you really can't be without your dog just for like a minute or a couple minutes to scale out and check out. Not too heavy there. It's kind of light on the drive on the steers. About thirty thousand or so. Okay, a little on the heavy side, but oh damn, a little on the tail heavy side there, huh? Thirteen hundred pounds over on the drive, so I should be all right. Cause I'm in the California hole, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, Thirteen hundred pounds. That's uh, I'm gonna move two feet back. That'll be forty-two feet. I'm legal in every state. All right, guys, we're good to go on the bills. Uh, I'm going to get up here and we'll slide the tandems. Um, they say every seven, so I've talked before about how some trailers have four inch hole pattern and some have six. Um, all JCT and Hurstbach trailers I've ever pulled have six inch pattern. Um, regardless, it doesn't matter which pattern you're working with. Um, couple one, uh, some rules of thumb here. Um, Anything over, uh, I mean, every, every 750 pounds that you're over a limit, slide one foot. So in other words, if you have a six inch pattern like I have, um, that's two holes. If you have a four inch pattern, that's three holes. So I need to slide two feet because uh, one and a half feet's not gonna be enough. Um, that'll be, really be over a thousand, yeah, a little over a thousand pounds. Uh, that'll be moved and I need a little bit more than that. So I moved two feet back. That'll be 42 feet The Illinois limit is 42 feet six inches. So I'll still be fine for there um, Ohio and Indiana. I'm not worried about theirs are basically 43 foot kingpin to the rear axle or 41 foot uh, kingpin to the uh, center of the axle group if I recall. Um, I'm gonna check my numbers, but I believe that to be the case. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll get over here to that staging area. I need some of my departure stuff, and we'll be out of here. I'm certain my weights will be fine, so I'm going to go ahead and um, depart out and all that. Basically, we're going to go straight up to Toledo and get on I-80 slash 90 right there and head west over to uh, Illinois. Um, Melrose Park, if I recall, is on the north end of Chicago. If, uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a bit since I've been uh, kind of northwest or something. I can't remember. North? Northwest? Something like that. I want to say it's over in that area. So uh, That's basically where we're going to. 
Um, so yeah, I'll have a, I'll have another video for you guys there, right? Um, not really much point considering I'm continuing the video past here. So, um, all right. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, as always, I uh, hope, yeah, hope the content that I put out to is uh, useful to people in some way or another. So, all right, y'all have a great day. Um, all right, we'll see you guys in uh, Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> we'll see ya.